In this video, we're going to be changing this PS5 controller's analog stick with a Hall Effect potentiometer. I recently made a video changing this full analog cube, but this could be a little bit difficult for some people as you have so many pins that you have to solder and remove. So in this video, we're going to find out which analog stick has the stick drift and we're just going to change only the potentiometers on it and to see if the Hall Effect potentiometers will work with the original joystick module so what makes the Hall Effect joystick different? It is the same typical design with the same number of pins and the joystick moves just like the original one. So if we open the original joystick module to see how the potentiometer works. So when you're moving a joystick, it's making this type of movement right here. And if we take off this little cap here, we see this plastic little case with a metal little ring here. What happens over time is this carbon track can get worn out by the constant contact of here which will signal imperfection and that will create a stick drift or an inaccurate reading of the position of the joystick. So this movement is registered by the contact of the metal wiper and the carbon track. The Hall Effect joysticks don't use any contact at all or any resistance. They use magnets instead. So here we see that there's that magnet here that this metal rod will stick to and that metal magnet is working with this mechanism here so this is a much more effective mechanism because it's not going to wear out over time and cause stick drift like the other one so we're just going to remove this magnet here and we're going to take my controller there that has a stick drift and we're going to try to replace it with this like this I picked these up on AliExpress and I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to get your hands on them. So we're just going to need a small Phillips screwdriver and a prime tool. Take off the R1 and the L1 buttons. We're just going to take this off. Once we're here, we're just going to keep taking it apart. So what we're going to do is remove these ribbon cables um, and the battery. Take off the screw here. Remove the battery case. Take these ribbon cables off. And we just want to, we want to access the board. So this is the joystick that's having the issues. So this one is This is the one, so basically this is the one. Now we can take off these caps. Now since this is the one that's having the issue, I'm just gonna mark it here with a tape. We could go ahead and just remove these two cables here. And we're just gonna remember that the bottom is red. So the bottom is red. So since this is the one with the issue, it's gonna be our our right side so we're just gonna place this on here like this I've decided to remove both of these potentiometers and replace them with both of the Hall Effect ones so we're gonna be working with these three pins here and the three pins here so we want to open these up it's gonna make it easier to remove so I'm gonna be using the removal alloy to get the potentiometers out I'm just going to take these two little pieces here and we're just going to put it on this side of these three pins and melt it down. So we want to heat this up for about one or two minutes and once the SMD removal alloy starts melting we could just pull off the potentiometer. And now we'll just do the same process to the other potentiometer. Okay, this one doesn't want to come off as easy. So I had to melt a little bit more because maybe that pin was not covering it all. But it looks like this one should come off right now.
Okay, now that we got these two removed, we're gonna clean the board and work on installing the Hall Effect ones. Okay, so now we just wanna remove and clean up some of this excess solder here. Now that these holes are cleaned, we could put the Hall Effect potentiometers in them. So let's just go ahead and open it up. So we want to take this part and as well as the magnet part. So the part with the magnet we want to insert on here. This other piece here. So I just realized that this cap and this cap, they're not the same size, meaning that it's not going to fit in here. So we're just going to have to uh, put this in without that cap. This other end part and put it into those three holes, secure it and lock it. So we'll see if this works. So let's take this magnet from this one. And we're gonna put it in here with the magnet down, just like that. And we're gonna take the potentiometer. Now we're gonna stick this into the holes. Lock it in. You wanna make, lock it in nice and tight. Okay. So both of them are locked in here. Nice and tight. We'll see how this turns out. So before we solder, we just wanna clean this tip out. Put it in this tip tinner, roll it around. Clean it up. This will make the whole soldering process a lot easier. Looks brand new. Let's put some flux paste on here. And this is what it turned out like. Okay, so let's start assembling this back. Now, I have no idea if this is gonna work, but let's find out. So we're gonna put this back in here. So here I'm gonna see if I could calibrate it to the center. I'm honestly not sure what's wrong. I've did this in the past and it did work. I just changed one potentiometer. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. In this experiment, I could not get it to work. Uh, I could not get it to center and the joystick itself doesn't even work. It was a failed attempt. It was more of an experiment. So going with changing the full a joystick module would be the best way to go to avoid this hassle. Let me know in the comments if you guys did something like this and if it worked out or not. But if I, obviously in this experiment, it didn't work for me. So I'm just going to leave it at that. See you guys next time.